Unfortunately, the human psyche remembers the negative things. So if someone once told you that your hair was stringy and looked gross, you're constantly going to worry about your hair looking stringy and being gross for years, if not your entire life. This project is very much in align with my philosophy for life. Um, I, I mean, I'm almost 40 years old and I have, the, have had or have the same insecurity as every other woman out there. I want to, you know, inspire women to care less what people think. It's putting a spotlight on a woman's beauty without directly focusing on all the extra that goes with it. Like, just being natural, being you, not just um, all of the makeup and all of the hairspray and everything that goes with it, but actually a spotlight on a woman and her beautiful features that she has that she, that are important. That's, that's what makes us. Everyone sees something a little bit different and has a different perspective on person. So it's fun to see what different people um, see when they look through their lens and can capture. Will I be able to um, make someone else feel beautiful or, you know, just make them feel like I captured them? That's like their first thing. Can you cover this up? Can you contour my nose? Can you make it look like I have cheekbones? Um, there's always something. Uh, that they that everyone apologizes for. I always hear the negative comments. I mean, that's usually what people pick out. What they they tend to lean towards, like they, my hair is too thin, or I wish it was thicker, or um, just all the negative that comes with it. But when I look at somebody's hair, I always see the positive. I think it it helps because sometimes that when you see something that you don't like about yourself, that's all you're gonna see. And once you kind of hide that one little flaw, you can notice, oh, you know, I might have had like my nose might bu might bug me, but now you notice how pretty your eyes are with um, a little bit of a shadow on. So you're not just focusing just on the negative, and it can really just build your confidence. Um, I mean, it's a huge thing. You got your hair on your head. People look at it. I mean, other than your your face, it's probably the second thing that gets looked at, I guess. They usually love it. Spin around and you got that bright smile on with their eyes all lit up. It's, it's fun. I love to style hair. It enhances a woman's beauty. It makes them feel more powerful and energetic and beautiful even though they already are but it gives them the extra confidence boost that they need and I like to be allowed to give that to somebody. I like to see women feel really confident and pretty when they're when they're done um, and not because they're they feel made up but because they actually look how they see themselves. I am a great mother. I am a great wife. I am a decent cook. <laughs> I am selfless uh, to a fault, I think, sometimes. I um, am jealous. I am stubborn. I am a yeller. I am a I'm confident at times, um, I'm weak in many, and I'm trying to be strong. I see a mom first. Uh, that's bittersweet sometimes. <laughs> I see somebody who, who needs the other half here. 
uh, as time goes on with this deployment, I feel like I'm losing a little bit more of myself uh, because my husband's gone and I just really feel like I need that back right now. Um, and I'm, I'm striving right now to see me, but right now I'm seeing uh, a person who needs her husband and a person who needs to be the best mom that she possibly can because they're missing their father right now. But at the same time, I, I'm striving to see me without my children and without my husband and right now that's so difficult. I feel like I dress for other people rather than myself and just here recently have I started to dress for myself and what I feel good in. I've always tried to keep up with the times and um, dress certain ways and I've never really felt that confidence uh, but now that I'm dressing for my body type and uh, what I think looks good on me, I'm definitely more confident uh, just recently. My mother-in-law has actually become one of my best friends. Um, she seems on top of the world all the time. She, um, she radiates this presence about her that you would think that she was flawless. Um, she is, she's strong. It is her confidence that, that you just, you want to be around her. She's always positive. I love her because who she is. I was able to feel good about myself when I was in front of her because I felt like how could she be so confident in, in everything that she is and not have a worry in the world as to the way that she looks, the way that she, anything? And why am I so insecure? I capture mostly families, um, so I think I capture, you know, um, the connection between mothers and babies and um, dads and their children, and um, I like to think that um, I capture something special in every photo shoot that they have forever, you know, 50 years, 60 years. I, I don't know why I love taking portraits, I just do. It's like part of my soul. My favorite feature was probably her um, personality. She was um, very calm and subdued um, in a good way. She was very easy to pose and model and um, she just had a very natural beauty to her. She was definitely not secure. She just, she needed uh, reinsurance, you know, um, guidance, but um, I photograph hundreds of women and all of them need it. I think when it comes to why I find photography to be important is that, you know, you can only live so long in a memory, you know, who you are and, and, and what, you, um, what you express with your, your, your being can only last but so long in a memory. I guess the challenge for me is trying to capture who someone is in their portrait. Oftentimes I think what gets lost in pictures is the person because they're at the direction of the photographer a lot of times. Stand here, look this way, do this, and sometimes you kind of lose sight 
on who the person is. It's about capturing who you are, not what you look like. I, I just wanted to make it simple. I wanted to make it easy and I wanted to make her comfortable because ultimately the people, their beauty, their inside beauty shines when they're comfortable. It was nice to see you just kind of relax in and, and be in yourself. So I think that's what I want to focus on. If there was a, a mention, uh, you know, after we have children, there's a lot of things that change, you know, and there was a mention about her hair, and I understand that. I think everybody, you know, it's one of the first things that, um, you know, people see about you is your hair, and uh, she was just a little concerned about it, but I don't think, I think she's a, a pretty confident woman. Oh, I think my favorite feature was her eyes. I, I think uh, talking with her earlier and listening to her stories, I think she conveyed a lot of her emotions with her eyes and the way she expressed herself, so I think that's what I wanted to focus on. Uh, photography is incredibly important. Um, I have felt that way as long as I can remember. I got my first camera when I was seven. Um, I always like to look through the family pictures. Uh, it's and um, I come from a long line of people who appreciate history and antiques and so I just think that I was it's kind of in my DNA. One of the things that women do that is the worst thing they can do um, for everyone is they don't take time for themselves. They don't do things for themselves. They don't pamper themselves and guess what? It's not selfish to do something for yourself. It's not selfish to pamper yourself, to do something fun, to do something you know unnecessary um, because it re-energizes you and having a, f a portrait session gives you that confidence you can always look at those pictures you happen to glance at the wall and there's that picture of you that you took and you're like oh wait I'm, I'm gorgeous she says she fakes her smiles a lot but um, I think she just doesn't see she doesn't give herself the opportunity to smile naturally and just let her be her she she rocked it. She was able to relax enough to get those natural looks. I have to see who she is naturally, you know, her facial expressions when she's talking about things. And I think I was able to capture some of those. And one of the things that really got me, and maybe because she had mentioned how it was one of her, her the things that she didn't like about herself or she didn't always like in pictures, um, was the smile. But I'm like, I don't know what there is here that you don't like. I, I don't understand. So, uh, but also eyes. I mean, eyes always. Windows to the soul. Um, She's got great eyes, she wise eyes. I could tell that she was, you know, wanting to, she wants to do well by me as the photographer. She really wanted to make me happy and make this project good. And so with that, you, even though nobody's putting pressure on you, you feel pressure. And so I, I felt that a little bit at the beginning, but um, by the end of it, I think she was so busy just listening to me give her orders <laughs> that she's, she like, um, just, you know, started focusing on that and the things I was giving her to think of. and. You know, yeah, she was, she's a little insecure, but not it more than any other woman that I've photographed. It seems to be a common theme. By pointing out to Tanya, hey, this is the many faces of you, and they're all beautiful. Um, you may not recognize them because it's not something that you're going to do in a mirror. It's something that you're going to be doing while you're not thinking of anything else. You're not going to be thinking of what you look like. It's where you're vulnerable, the ones where you're a little flirtatious, you're a little sexy. Um, you're not going to recognize that, but guess what? Your husband is. And those are the images that they're going to want. What were some of your thoughts as you're watching the footage of you being on camera and some of the comments the photographers were making? I didn't think that I looked as bad as I felt that I looked. It was very eye-opening. Most of the comments were about my eyes. And so now maybe I have a little bit more appreciation for my eyes. Um, so how do you think this project was successful yes if it helped any one person to be more confident to feel that they were good enough to feel like they were beautiful even when they didn't feel like they were beautiful that's me it worked it worked I feel confident I feel 
uh, maybe when I don't even have makeup on that it's okay if this is me sometimes you think oh my gosh my hair my hair and no one's even looking at your hair they're looking at you and who you are and what story you're telling and they're listening to your words and they're not judging you on your appearance going beyond looks they, they try to get into who you are. Love unconditionally. That's... That's the one message I want to communicate to women is love yourself unconditionally and don't expect something from you or from others, because it's you who matters. All your flaws, all your beauties, you know, your curves, your angles, you know, the freckles that you don't want in the spots that they're in. Just love yourself unconditionally. Is there anything you want to add that I covered in the questions? No, I forgot. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> to, uh, to go with what you have, your, um, gorgeous, beautiful woman, and your heart obviously emits that, and run with it. Be who you are, because you're gorgeous. Yes. Don't be so hard on yourself. You know, just give yourself a break. You're beautiful, be confident, and care less what people think. Get over yourself. And, um, and love yourself, love life, and get that confidence you need to be able to do that. I, I do think we downgrade a lot, and we should just accept the compliment and know that somebody's noticing the great things about you and not picking out your flaws the way that you do. So you should see yourself in a better light the way that they see you. Uh, taking pictures of yourself without makeup on and just choosing something that you love about yourself and embracing it.